if, if you look at, say, um, Elaine Locke's response to, to um, uh, Du Bois on the Negro artist, on the black artist, uh, Du Bois calls the black artist who just does their own thing decadent. But Elaine Locke is gay. So he can see right through that. He can see that I'm on Locke's side on this. Oh, thing, totally, right? totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But also, but no, but Locke also saw the, the beautiful thing, right? Which is Locke said very beautifully, um, um, uh, human beings can't live in a valueless world. You take, you take art, you take beauty, you take all those things out of the work you, right. world, you also take our freedom and meaning. Right, yes. Well, that's the, that, the, that, that, we that's the, the underlying deep alone. point of Locke's critique of, of Du Bois. Also that Du Bois's strategy is going to backfire because it's going to reinforce the very logic that it seeks to supplant. But, uh, but how did he get to that place? Just like you're saying, how did Douglas get to the place he got? Uh, my hypothesis is that, you know, if, if you're gay in the 1920s, there's no way of seeing respectability politics as possible for you. You see through it because you see see that it values, you know, it val it's a value system that immediately places you in, uh, you know, who you are, uh, subjugates you. Like this is clear. Like the Stewart biography. Have you read? The, have you made it? I've made it like halfway through. But I mean, Locke is aware of his 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 in homosexuality from such an early age. I mean, Including with the boys' son-in-law. Right, yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but, 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 you know, there's a part two to what I was saying. The part two is, is, is this is where I, what people don't pay attention to with political life. But this is where liberalism has posed a serious problem for, pol for politics. You see, um, the, the, there's an extent to which, although Harriet Bailey saw Douglas for seven months. The, the future was completely anonymous. One of the, the things with Douglas is when he began to act, what gave him the freedom to act is the understanding that when you act politically, it's never about you. Mm. It's always about others. And the chain of others always move to the anonymous others. And this mm. is one of the reasons why fascism is so anti this element because fascism right wants to have the idea of only the 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 the, the version that could be seen in a way that brings it back into similarity yeah. and eventually the closed because fa fascism is all about the us them distinction correct and so the other is only understood as the enemy correct and whereas this moment this uh, this is a radical kind of love where you're fighting not for you, but paradoxically for the anonymous. Everybody. So you're thinking of liberalism there as a liberalism of the self, as the individualist Cor liberalism. Correct, and that's one why can, it's wed with capitalism and yeah. all of these elements. Right. That's cap. That's the liberalism that 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 is uh, that underlies uh, market logic. And but there's also another conception of liberalism that uh, you know that we can rescue hopefully from this, which does put your relationship to others central. No, but this is where it gets into trouble again. The problem with liberalism is that the project of a lot of liberalism has been to subordinate political life to moral life. And oh, so yeah. when it thinks about the others, it's in a stream of, of, of moral epithets. Right. The problem yeah. with that is it, there are many folks. The, the error is it conflates moral responsibility right. with political responsibility. Right. And they're not the same thing. Yeah. Moral responsibility. And it abstracts from, uh, to think, yeah, I mean, it abstracts from political reality. Right, because when you think morally, you could say, you think about me, am I right, am I wrong? Yeah. What, you know, this is why you can have Afro-pessimism. It works with, with liberalism, right? You could have optimism and so forth. Uh, when you think politically, it's never, ever about me. It's always right. the language of us. Right. And that's why political responsibility, you can't say, well, I didn't do it. I didn't vote for Trump. Right. I didn't vote for, right. you know, May or whoever. Because you know, you're in a structure. Or, that yeah, Le Pen, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, Le Pen or whoever. You, 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 when it's political, it's always, the actions, everything has to be about the community. 
Yeah. And this has been the big problem. A lot of people have made a lot of industry over this question of collapsing into communitarianism versus individualism. Right. It's bogus. The, yeah. the, 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 and I think Iris Young was beautiful on this. Uh, I think Carl Jaspers was beautiful uh -huh. on it. Steve Biko was beautiful on it. They all understood that the fundamental issue of political responsibility, that's why the, the subject, so to speak, is not about the individual or the moral, so it's about the citizen. And it's not the citizen as a legal citizen. It's in, the, in this model of citizenship that's, c c that's caring about the city. And a lot of people miss this point because today we think of cities and we put citizens in them. No, yeah. it's citizenship that produces cities. Right. Right. And so that is where, and, and, and here's where it gets even trickier because you see, you have this weird power as a citizenry uh, because your actions, what, you don't know the full ramifications of your actions except one thing, whoever comes after you will be affected by those actions, right. Right. whether they're good or bad. Right. And they're anonymous. Yeah. And this is the thing that a lot of people miss. You see. Conservatism always emerges when people get involved in the mechanisms of power with the question, what is in, what is in it for me? And that's why you could sell people a bag of goods with conservatism, because you, could, you say to them, well, you will get what you want right away, et cetera, but uh, you know, this other long-term question of building a society, you, know, you might be dead before that happens. And that's the point of politics, you see? Mm. We're in a moment right now, for instance, of a bunch yeah, of... Take Ida B. Wells. You know, at the time, she had no hope of full success, but she still, you know, what she did was directed again to, to a future. I mean, uh, the anti-lynching bill was passed, when? 2008? <laughs> you know? That's a beautiful example. And there's so many. That's, yeah. the, that's the point. That there are a lot of people who have this profound understanding that political action is never about them. Yeah, and, 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 and not even about now. Right. And it's about leaving, and that's, that's what I think of as my anti-fascist work. Like, when I read Hannah Arendt right now, um, or Black Reconstruction, the two works that have probably most strongly influenced me recently, um, uh, the course of my recent work, they're written for the future. They're written for an audience to read them and say, oh, this is how it works. Well, can you pick up, you know, when you read the chapter of Poor White, you know, and it tells you exactly how people are talking now, or, you know, the white working class, like he lays it out. And it's like, and Arendt is the same way. You can read them and they're so startlingly now because they're reporting on a situation then, but they know it's gonna reoccur. Mm -hmm. And they're trying, and they're writing a letter to the future. And, you know, people say, well, with our work, what can you be doing? You know, what are you, why is it not concrete? Well, you know, <laughs> if everyone read Black Reconstruction right now, <laughs> then the world, we'd have a much better understanding. You know, journalists would not write about, we, we, people wouldn't be talking about the white working class. If everyone read, read a rent, we would see the structures. It's because I knew origins of totalitarianism that I started writing on fascism like eight or nine years ago, because I was seeing like with birtherism, the structures that she describes with conspiracy theories, the protocols, the elders of Zion, how you manipulate the press, like by saying, oh, they're not reporting on the conspiracy theory. Uh, you know, so they must be implicated in the conspiracy theory. Yeah. Um, these structures, I think that's our responsibility as intellectuals, to put it down as a letter for the future.